Coding agents are all the rage right now. You got Devon, Claude Code, Jules, Copilot's new agent feature, and many more. A lot of these also work in the background, automatically generating code based on issues and creating their own pull requests in your repos. And I had the impulsive thought, how hard could it be to build one of these myself? This is Scarn an agent that works through issues on some of my side project repositories in GitHub. When a new issue is opened, it runs in the background on my local machine. After a few moments, some code changes are made and a PR is opened up for me to review. During a few practice rounds, it missed the mark occasionally, but checking out the Reddit thread about Copilot's PRs on the .NET Core issues, I'd say that I'm at least on par with a multi-billion dollar company. The best part is that this entire thing is running from a single 500 line long PHP script. I'll dive into how it works, how I built it, and what features you might be able to add to this to make it your own. Let's talk about agents, a term that is thrown around in the AI space on a pretty regular basis. In the simplest terms, an agent is a program running in a loop that provides some kind of information to an LLM and then performs some kind of action based on the response that it gets back. This chart kind of highlights a typical agent pattern. We gather context, where we add in our prompt and helpful information, we generate text from the LLM, we parse that output and filter or manipulate it into a format that can be used to perform a function that's acting on the generated text from the AI, and then we go right back into gathering context for the next round of the loop. This is basically the gist of every kind of AI agent out there. The differences between quality, usefulness, and performance lie mostly in the functions available to the LLM, the specific model used, and just how many edge cases are prepared for in the underlying program running in this loop. Knowing this, let's take a look at how I planned my coding agent. The workflow is pretty straightforward. Listen for an issue created on one of my repos, compile the context needed, this includes source code and the issue body, send that information to an LLM provider of my choosing, get back a list of changes to make and perform those changes, and then finally open a new PR with that branch that was created. I decided to build this in PHP because one, it's a language that I am very familiar with and like using, and two, I thought it would be a fun exercise because most of the work that I'm seeing done in this space is usually using Python or TypeScript. So using a language like PHP that's not really used for AI or LLM technology, I thought would be honestly pretty fun. I also wanted to keep things nice and compact, so I put everything in a single file and followed a basic procedural pattern. Let's build it. First, I'll set a time limit higher than the default. 300 seconds or five minutes should be plenty. I used a few external libraries, so we'll need to include that composer autoload. And one of those libraries is .env, so we can pull in secrets with a local .env file. That's instantiated next. Following that, let's add a few helper functions that'll be used throughout the script. This env function will help us pull in environment variables easier, delete tree to remove an entire directory recursively, something that is not in the standard library in PHP, and note for adding in some debug statements to a local file as well as our console output. All right, now we come to the main entry point for this entire application where we're going to handle the incoming webhook from GitHub. And then the end of our script, we actually need to fire off that handle webhook function. This is the main structure for this program. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to handle in this handle webhook event. First, let's go ahead and validate that incoming GitHub webhook to make sure that we're actually getting a request from GitHub. And we'll set that secret in the UI later on. Next, we'll grab the payload coming in from that request and send it to a main process issue function. This is where the entire, this will be the main loop for our application. After that process is, let's go ahead and send a quick response back and we can exit the script here. Now let's go ahead and fill in these two function bodies that we just added in. For the webhook validation, this isn't really anything special. It's comparing two hashes, one based on the, what we have saved in our env file, and the other one based on what's being sent over from GitHub. They should match, and if so, returns back true. Now for the process issue, this is where we're going to go through our loop for actually creating the context, sending it to the LLM, getting back changes, making them, and then sending out a PR. First, I'm going to fill in multiple variables from information coming from our GitHub repo. The owner and the name is always going to be me, but I put this out on GitHub, so if anybody else wants to use it, I just wanted to keep it as generic as possible. Then we get the number, the title, and the body for the issue that is being created. Let's go ahead and create a basic branch name for this, prefix with fix for issue and then the issue number. And then what I wanna do next is clone that repository somewhere locally so that our application can work on the code. We're also passing in a GitHub token and a temporary directory used for the place where we're going to be storing that code locally. Then we'll go ahead and create that branch that we named earlier, scan the code base to generate some context for the LLM, actually send that context to the LLM and get back a response, apply the changes that the LLM recommends, commit those changes using a provided commit message, push the branch up to GitHub, 
create the PR from the branch and provided PR description, and then finally clean up any temporary files like the checked out repo. Now I've only added in the function signature for each of these, so let's go one by one and I'll briefly touch on each of the function bodies. Clone repository makes a path based on our temporary directory and the repo name. If it already exists, it deletes the entire folder and then remakes it with the permission of 777. It then uses the exec function in PHP to run git clone and returns back the full path to the repo if everything went successfully. For create branch, we change directories to that temporary folder, run git checkout b for the new branch name using that same exec function, and if everything goes successfully, we return true. And for both of these functions, as well as the other ones I'm going to be putting together, you'll notice that I have some error handling in here as well. So regardless of the failure or the success, I make a little note of what's going on and then return early. This is where we're actually scanning our code base for relevant code and compiling it into a context for an LLM provider. So first we have two arrays. We have a bunch of code extensions in the first one and then directories that are usually excluded in the second, like node modules, .git, logs, disk directories, cache, etc. We also give a maximum file size and I'm using five megabytes for this. And then we go through a recursive iterator iterator to pull out every file of every directory in the given repo path. We go through a loop of these, skip over excluded directories, and also skip over any files that are not code or relevant to our context. We also skip over files that are too large, and then finally get the contents of the file and compile its output into the larger context window, separating it by a bunch of new lines and the actual relative path to the file prefaced by file in all caps. There's a couple of different ways that you can handle adding in a bunch of context to an LLM provider. This happens to be one of the more simple ones that uses the least amount of tokens while also providing a good clear separation between different files. We catch any exceptions, we note how many files that were added to the context window, and then we return the entire output, which in this instance is a large string consisting of the file contents all concatenated together. And if you're asking why we're including all files instead of just finding ones that are relevant, I'll touch on that later on in this video. Next, we go ahead and send that context to the actual LLM provider. The first step is to create a full prompt that's going to be used based on the code context that was generated earlier, as well as the issue title and body. The prompt itself I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, but I'm using the here doc syntax so I can add in a bunch of formatted text to correspond to the prompt that I want to send to this LLM. It's pretty boilerplate. You're a coding assistant. Your task is to analyze the issue. Here's what I expect to get back. Here are rules for those changes. Here's the code base context. Here's the issue to resolve. Here's the description. Please analyze the issue and provide your response in the specified JSON format. And then to actually get the response back from an AI provider, we're using some basic API requests and we have a couple configurations for different providers. So right now I just have OpenAI and Anthropic, but we can also add in things like Google and DeepSeek and any other ones that have an available API. We post to our particular client's URL and set a timeout of two minutes. Then finally, we get the results back as JSON and then go through each of them and parse out the text based on the response that we're expecting back from that particular provider. Finally, we're cleaning up any particular markdown code that might be available and then returning back the decoded response, which should be just an array in PHP decoded from a JSON body. So now we have an array of changes that need to be applied to specific files in that repo path. For each of those files, let's go ahead and make sure that it exists, unless it's a type of an insert, in which case, let's go ahead and create that file afterwards. Then we'll parse that file as an array of lines, go through each of the changes that are specified for that particular file, and then depending on the case, whether it's a replace, an insert, or a delete, make the changes necessary based on the information given from the LLM. Finally, we write back the modified content back to the file, and if it doesn't exist already, we create the whole directory structure in place and then add the file in as an insertion. We're making sure to note of any potential errors, and then finally returning true at the very end of this. So at this point, we should have our files written to, our changes made, now we need to commit these changes and push them up to our branch. Like with the checkout command, we're changing directories to the repo folder, and then running a couple of commands with PHP's exec function. Similarly for the push branch function, we change directories, we have a whole git push command and we're using that token authentication, run it using exec, and then returning true if everything went fine. The last step to do on the GitHub side of things is to actually create the PR. So like with the request to our LLM provider, we're just using a basic API call for this, and we're using the same token that we use to authorize the push to the GitHub repo. The description for this, as well as the commit message that was used on that branch were both provided by the LLM itself. And then finally, we're going to clean up any temporary files. And this is basically just removing that entire clone repository. All right, so there we are at exactly 500 lines. So let's go ahead and save this, run it, and try it out. 
Now, instead of actually deploying this out on a public server, I'm just going to run this locally with PHP's built-in web server. Now we actually have to hook this into a GitHub repository in order to get information about new issues. I have this old work in progress repo that'll be perfect for this. So let's go ahead and go to settings, webhooks, and then add webhook. But I need a public URL for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and use an ingrok tunnel to the HTTP port that the agent is running on. For the content type, let's go ahead and select JSON. Then we need to create our little secret here. And then don't forget to update our env file with the same secret. We can select individual events. And for this, I'm going to just select issues. So we'll only get an event happening whenever a new issue is created. So for this example application, I have a bunch of factories added in here, but I don't have them added to the database seeder. So let's go ahead and create an issue for this. Okay, so this is pretty bare bones, but it should be able to pick this up. So let's go ahead and create the issue. And then go ahead and take a look at our output and see if this is running. Okay, so it cloned the repository, added files to the contacts window, and now it is contacting the LLM. This takes the most time. This is why I added in those timeouts. We don't have any kind of streaming associated with this. It's just making everything in one large request and waiting for the generation to finish up before it gets back that response. All right, it looks like it applied the changes and committed them with a message. So now we should be able to see that PR in our GitHub repository. All right, and we have fix for issue three by agent Scarn. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Updates the database seeder to include seeding for all defined model factories. And if we go ahead and take a look at the files changed, we see here we have all of those added in here. Not exactly the best placement though, because they are inside of an array for an existing factory, but hey, um, let's not worry about that. This, this, this worked totally as expected and without any issue at all. So there it is. In hype terms, an autonomous coding agent built with 500 lines of PHP. Sure, the bulk of the work is offloaded to an LLM provider, but let's not dwell on that. So where can we go from here? We might have noticed that we didn't do a whole lot in terms of that whole agent loop that I talked about earlier. We are really only running through one cycle of that loop to get our output. Instead, for our first prompt, we could ask the LLM to go through the directory tree of our application and only pull out relevant files to the issue at hand. Then we compile the context based on the contents of those files and potentially save a much larger amount of tokens. This is especially true for much larger projects where all of the files concatenated together would easily overflow the context window of a typical OpenAI request. Taking this up a further notch in complexity, we could even do something like TDD, where we ask the LLM to create first a suite of tests and then continuously loop over code generation, running the tests afterwards, providing that output to the LLM, and only stopping that loop cycle once all the tests turn green. Now, of course, I'm saying all this while there are tools out there that do these functions exceedingly well, better than anything that I could put together. But I think it's fun and important to sometimes build your own tools, even if they are crappier versions of existing ones. Specifically, when there's a large amount of conversations or hype happening around a particularly new topic or piece of technology. Creating your own version of something can really help you understand how the underlying mechanics and processes work and even help remove some of that magic surrounding it. I mean, after all, Agentic Coding Assistant is really just a fancy name for a for loop.